So how about your meditation this week, Clive? Um, yeah, well, I keep, uh, you know, I keep persisting. What I find is if I've just been doing something exciting or stimulating, then it's hard to get in the mood for meditation, you know? Yes. Uh, and like just now, I've been watching a soccer game. I guess that's why soccer was on my mind. But uh, yes. yeah, I, you know, my favorite team, Manchester United, that's where I hail from and everything. And, and so it'll be interesting to see if I can calm down and... <laughs> And meditate right now, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that uh, you start that starts happening in meditating when you're doing this stuff is you start just becoming more aware of your own mental state and how this goes up and down. And here you get this yeah. kind of energy going, mental energy going because of your involvement. Uh, with that, uh, with something, it doesn't matter what actually, it's a general case. And yeah. so part of the deal is uh, this becomes a way for you to observe yourself and to uh, learn uh, what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I always like Yuval Harari, and his kind of, um, his uh, motivation to meditate, he said, I just crave to know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's not easy. No. You know, because we, uh, this is all stuff that uh, we don't learn to do as a kid. And it's really not... Uh, being quiet and introspective is not a thing that is a part of our Western culture. Mm -hmm. But uh, so anyway, you get to observe and this observation is becomes very powerful over time. Mm -hmm. And out of this observation is the stuff that uh, in the end you start to see yourself and the world differently. And as soon as you see things differently, instantaneous with that, your life changes. It's funny, you may notice this, but it's funny, in fact. So how about you, Cheryl? How was your week? Really good. Um, uh, my routine is, I'm really feeling more solid with a routine. Uh, and it's been, it's been great, actually. I've had a really good week. That's very good. Now, one of the things also that you may find, and this is not now, perhaps, but as you go along with this, is that trying different things, trying different routines and seeing if that makes a difference. You know, for example, with me, uh, several years ago, I uh, started doing meditation classes that I was offering and giving. And when I started to do that, it made me look at my own practice. What am I doing? And so one of the things I tried uh, for uh, a couple of years, actually, is trying different lengths of time and different times of day. And what I actually found out was that once I started to regularly meditate for me more than about an hour a day regularly, which is a lot, you know, or it all depends on your attitude, how much it is, but it's still kind of a lot. Uh, I found that uh, this kind of almost flood of creative energy started flowing and uh, 
that has basically been flowing uh, as a regular part of my life since then. And uh, so this, uh, whatever it is that we're doing is something that uh, can bring real change. And I've seen it in my own life and I really appreciate it. It's one of the reasons why uh, I keep it up and it's one of the reasons why I'm interested in supporting people who are uh, like you guys trying to actually build a practice. Mm -hmm. So with your practice, as I say, one of the things be willing to do is to look at it, see what works, see what doesn't work, be willing to try new things, and be willing to uh, throw away things that uh, aren't working anymore. And all of that's okay. You know, you're still... Uh, kind of uh, doing this experimenting on yourself, if you will. And as you're going along, uh, you learn stuff. And don't be afraid to let go of the old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is important. What we're talk going to talk about today uh, is also another part of that process. Uh, it, this is a particularly powerful tool in that process. Uh, we will have our first meditation first, and then we're going to talk about what they call the witness consciousness. And this is a way of paying attention to your self and to your life where uh, you are freer inside from all the stuff that's going on. And so it turns out to be in this process of change, which comes through meditation, this is one of the real uh, kind of power tools, if you will. So, Okay, so let us start with our uh, meditation and let me get my chime. Okay, and we will do uh, again just basic mindfulness paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally receive whatever is experienced, then let it go.
All right. That always seems good to me. Now, uh, so today, let me make sure I have this set up right. Okay. There we are. Okay. So today I will talk about witness consciousness. Buddhists say that cravings lead to attachments. Attachments are when we think that something, experience, or person will bring us happiness. Any happiness, of course, from things that come and go is only temporary, and all things, experiences, and people come and go. Nothing is permanent. So attachments only bring us uh, happiness when they succeed that is temporary and everyone wants to be happy and everyone really wants to be happy always. Attachments distract the mind from the inherent happiness that is within each of us. And it uh, distracts it with really what is an unconscious, almost conditioned response due to this attachment. One way to get free of attachments is to cultivate the witness consciousness. This is to become a neutral observer of your own life. The witness place within you is simple awareness. The part of you that is aware of everything. Just noticing, watching, not judging, just being present, being here now. That's what we practice in meditation. The witness is what's aware of your own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Witnessing is like waking up in the morning and looking into the mirror and noticing yourself, not judging or criticizing, but just neutrally observing the quality of being awake. That process of stepping back takes you out of being submerged in your experiences, thoughts, sensory inputs, and attachments, and in to self-awareness. With this self-awareness comes the subtle joy of just being here, alive, enjoying being present, in this moment. Eventually, floating in this subjective awareness, the objects of awareness dissolve and you'll come into pure consciousness and be filled with joy and compassion. The witness is your centering device. It guides the work you do on yourself. 
once you understand that there is a place in you that is not attached, you can extricate yourself from the attachments. Pretty much everything we notice and are drawn to in the universe is a reflection of our attachments. Jesus warned us, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Desires creates your universe. That's just the way it works. You can become free just by letting go of desires and being in the present moment with no expectations, no agenda, no plan, just simply being. So your first job is to work on yourself. The greatest thing you can do for another human being is to get your own house in order and find your true spiritual heart. Taking action to lessen the power of attachments in your life is a very big step towards this. Cultivating the witness consciousness within you is an important tool in your spiritual practice. All right. And now we have a video on the witness consciousness by uh, a guy that I really like. He's Swami Sarva Priyananda, who is a young Indian Swami who's the head of the Ramakrishna Center in New York. His talk is, is it my mind or is it the witness consciousness? Uh, when I'm watching my thoughts without generating further thoughts, is it my mind or the witness consciousness that is doing the watching? In the waking state, I notice the absence of thoughts when the thoughts subside. If it is the witness consciousness that notices the absence, why can't I notice the absence of thoughts in the deep sleep state in the same way? I feel like that I am stuck in my mind even when I am witnessing it, or otherwise I could have done it in the deep sleep too. All right. A subtle question, but important. These questions are important not only for the person who is asking, but for all of us. The basic question it comes up, keeps coming up again and again. When you talk about witness consciousness, isn't it the mind watching the mind? Because the mind can do that. There's a term for that, introspection. You can watch your mind. So when you speak about witness consciousness, are you talking about that kind of thing, watching the mind? No. This is the difference. The mind can watch itself. You can introspect and look at the thoughts that are coming up in your mind. That is a practice of witnessing the movements of the mind. But it's still a practice. Why is it a practice? Because you can do it or not do it. It can begin and it, it, can, it can end. What begins and ends, what you can do or what can you choose not to do, that is not the witness consciousness. Whenever you are not even introspecting, a flash of pain comes. You are not practicing Vedantic introspection. I am the seer and the pain is the scene. You are not practicing it. Pain comes and you say, ouch, did you feel it or not? That which felt the pain, that which reacted with, uh, with ouch, that one is the witness consciousness. Even when you are not trying to introspect. If you try to introspect and try to be a witness of your thoughts, that's a good practice. But remember, the operative word is practice. If you think that is the witness, then this, this problem will arise. That that is not there in deep sleep. 
I am watching my thoughts. Sometimes I watch it, sometimes I don't watch it. Certainly in deep sleep, I do not watch it because I don't feel I'm doing anything in deep sleep. Then what is the real? So this is the first point. This thing which you are talking about is the mind, certainly the mind. It is certainly the mind. It's not the real witness consciousness. One Swami in the Himalayas put it this way. It's an easy mistake to make. One Swami in the Himalayas put it this way. He said, teaching witness and witnessed. Drig Drishya Viveka, seer and seen. After teaching this, he said to the monks gathered there. So Swamis, do you feel that you are the consciousness in which thoughts are arising and thoughts are moving and thoughts are subsiding? You are calm now, relaxed. And he said, yes, yes, yes. Then he, this only works in Hindi. I'll translate. He said, Bahut bade gadde mein giroge. <laughs> You have dug up specially big pit for yourself. You're going to fall into that pit. <laughs> That's the mind. That's the mind. That which learns Drik Drishya Vivek, a seer and seen discrimination, is the mind. That which attempts to practice it is the mind. That which makes the breakthrough is the mind. But once the breakthrough is made, it points to something beyond the mind, which you were earlier, are now, even in deep sleep. You don't have to try anything there. We don't know it yet. That not knowingness is in the mind. And the knowingness about it also will come in the mind and remove that ignorance. And you remain as the witness of the mind, which you always were from time immemorial. In deep sleep also you are that. But you will not have that kind of a thought, I am witnessing my deep sleep. Earlier I could not, now I can witness my deep sleep. No, 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 you cannot. If you do that, then you are not in deep sleep. <laughs> that's, the, that's the mind. The f funny story of the, you know, the uh, mothers sometimes check, check if children are sleeping. Is the good boy sleeping? Is, is he asleep? If he's asleep, then his right toe will move. And the right toe moves, you know, no, the ch child is just f f faking it. I remember in, uh, in Deoghar, in, in the school where I first joined Ramakrishna Order School, there's there the hostels where children stay, little kids. And they become specially energetic and naughty when, uh, at bedtime. And the Swami in charge of the hostel was once one Swami in charge of one hostel was very strict. And the other Swami was a very elderly, very kindly, uh, grandfatherly old Swami, and he couldn't manage those kids. He, he was 80 and they were 8. I mean, how do you expect? <laughs> so he went for advice to the strict Swami. How do you manage to persuade them to go to sleep? He said, I don't take any nonsense. I say, I'm going to count to three. One, two, and three. By that time three, you should be all tucked in bed with your eyes completely shut. And no movement, lights off. And I count one. Two, by the time they're all jumping in bed and getting into the, the, into the bed sheets and, and into, into the covers and going to sleep. And three, it's done. Nobody dares to move after that. So this elderly Swami said, I should try it. And then he went and tried. And then he came back and said, it didn't work. Why? I said, one, two. And the kids said, three. <laughs> <laughs> They know what, how much they can push you. <laughs> yeah. So one indication, then how do you make the breakthrough? Here is the indication. You said, the questionnaire, I feel that I am trapped in the mind. What notices this, that I'm, I feel the feeling of being trapped in the mind? Is that one trapped in the mind? Be very quiet and stay with that question. That I am trapped in the mind. Whatever I do is the mind. What is saying that? What notices it? That one is not trapped. Does anybody understand what I am talking about here? Some of you do, yes. That one is not trapped in the mind. Never was. <laughs> Okay, so now more meditation. 15 minutes.
All right. Hmm. Questions or comments? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Okay, well, that's good, actually. And so well, let, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so the, the talk that we listened to, you have to be able to distinguish between witnessing and just and thinking. Yes. 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 That's why, that's why I wanted uh, to play uh, that talk because you know, the, at one level, uh, you know, there's all this mental activity that goes on and sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's slow, but uh, the witness is deeper than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the witness is just there. It doesn't rise, it's not more at one time and less than another time. And, mm -hmm. uh, a way to look at it within yourself is again uh what knows all this activity that's going on within me there's mm -hmm. something that knows all of it and it's not touched by any of the activity and it's not moved by any of the activity mm -hmm. uh some people talk about this like uh, using the image of a movie on a screen. And mm -hmm. it's like ordinarily, we think we're in the movie. Mm -hmm. But the witness, when you really see the witness consciousness, that is the screen. Mm -hmm. So we thought we were the movie all this time. And it turns out we're to the screen. And when there's a fire, it may look like it's hot, but we're not burnt. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. again, really being able to feel that and know that within yourself means that you can see all this stuff and just let it go by and yeah uh not be attached to it and you can have all of your thoughts even because we like to have thoughts but when you don't grab a hold of them the thoughts only give the power that you give them by your reacting and responding to them the poor little thought is innocent yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's me that causes all the trouble <laughs> and as you the more you see that it turns out then it the happier you are yeah it's funny I it's think funny. I get it <laughs> okay mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so let's finish with our chant then oh Shanti, 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 Om, peace, peace, peace. Well, very good. And I was a good session and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Adios. Adios.